Hey everybody, Ben here from Cinderblock Studios, and I'm back with another acrylic painting tutorial. Today we're going to be painting beams of sunlight, so stick around. So I'm about ready to put the sort of finishing touches on this painting that I've been working on uh, all day today, or at least most of the day today. And uh, one thing that I needed to do before I started doing sort of the upper highlights, or what I'm calling the, the sunbeams, I want light to be kind of showing through this big circular break in the clouds, your underlying layers have to be dry. Now, I'm not talking dry to the touch, because you, a lot of times with acrylics it's dry to the touch, but if the bond underneath hasn't formed yet, and if you start spreading paint or water on top of it, you're going to rip that paint right off. This paint has to be dry. I let this paint for, sit for six hours before I decided, okay, it's time to actually finish this thing. So, uh, I, but I, I do recommend overnight if you can uh, do so. So for this tutorial, you're going to need uh, really kind of any brush you want, uh, just a brush. Uh, I'm actually using this uh, Winsor Newton Cottonman watercolor brush. I bought this specifically to use for acrylics because it's nice soft bristles because it's a, technically a watercolor brush. It's also got a short handle because I have a lot more control in a small space, but really any brush will work. Stiff bristles, soft bristles, doesn't really matter. Need a little bit of water. And two colors today. Some type of yellow, preferably a cool or transparent yellow. So today I'm going to be using some high flow Hansa Yellow Medium. Although you could also use something like uh, an Indian Yellow because it's also very, very transparent. I actually used a lot of Indian yellow in the grass in the center here. But I don't use the hands of yellow because it's a little more cool of yellow. Uh, as well as some zinc white. Uh, both of these colors are highly transparent uh, acrylics. So you, when you apply them to the canvas, or in this case a piece of slate that I'm working on, uh, you're going to get a lot more of a transparent uh, color and you're not going to like just totally destroy the layers underneath. You're just getting a little bit of transparency with that. So, unlike a lot of my regular big tutorials, this isn't going to take a whole heck of a lot of time. So I didn't bother doing a big setup. I'm also trying to get the painting done. So I need to focus on uh, keeping things simple. Basic glass palette off to the side, as always. For this, I'm looking at uh, a really simple mix. So I'm going to need just a little water on my brush. Tiny little bit of paint. We don't want to overpower with the yellow, we want it to be probably more white than anything else. Keep it thin and transparent. Okay. So one thing that's very easy to do when painting uh, beams of sunlight is it's very easy to go overboard. Don't do that. Keep it small, simple, handful of strokes tops. So I'm just going to come in up from the top and pull. A little bit with the paint. Actually, I actually want to grab a soft brush. I'm going to use a mop brush for this because I'm going to be able to pull it very, very easily. You can also use a, a nice soft bristled fan would work well for this. Something like this. Uh, fairly decent size and, and very, very soft bristles, so you can, you can pull it without smearing the paint too, too much. Because you don't really want brush strokes here, so stiffer bristle, bristled brushes may not be as good. But I just want to pull that color out. Like so. I want to unify what I've got here a little bit. But again, I don't want to go overboard. Just letting the little tiny bit of paint and the brush do most of the work. This is really thick here. I shouldn't have put it on this much. I might be able to even pull it up like that. So, I want it to be kind of behind this tower, so I'm trying to keep it backward a little bit more. 
I don't want it to cross into the foreground because the foreground would be in the shadow. It would be like way, like here's this part of this would be like way, way up in terms of where the clouds are put in shadows. Okay. Couple of them. I'm actually going to get more white now and thin the paint less because I actually want to get a couple good solid beams of light here. I'm just going to pull it out to your liking. Uh oh, that's bad. <laughs> that's what we call a pretty big mistake. I think my fan brush dipped into my white over here when I was moving that around, but it's wet so we can wipe it. Yeah, I think I picked up on a bit too much of that. I'm going to pull my brush aside here. And again, if you try to do this when your underlying paint, paint is wet, it wouldn't work. You'd end up pulling up stuff that you've got. So avoid doing so. That looks pretty good. Do want a couple more fine, defined lines here. So I'm going to even probably ignore the uh, that brush now, the the mop, and just pull some lines it down. Like so. There you have some glorious beams of light. Uh, now I might take this a little bit further, add a bit more zinc white, and I'm going to keep working with, working with it just a little tiny bit. But that really is sort of all there is to it uh, for creating beams of light. The, the real trick here is to use transparent paint and to do so when your underlying layers are dry. That's really all it takes to, to create the unique, simple, easy beams of light that kind of create an interesting and dynamic painting. So if you enjoyed this tutorial, learned something, or just want to help support the channel, hit the like button, get subscribed if you're not already, and this has been from Cinderblock Studios, reminding you also to support on Patreon if you're financially able to, and subscribe for more, and I will see you guys next time. Hey guys, thanks so much for checking this video out. You might notice, that if you're watching this video within the first, I would say, couple of days that it was uploaded, that the upload date and the date that you're seeing it is probably really a, a bigger gap than it usually is. That's because I had to upload this several days earlier, because by the time you guys are seeing this, I will already be at Colossal Con in Sandusky, Ohio, for a few days. Uh, I'm not selling work, I'm not in Artist Alley, I'm just going and enjoying a, a fun little convention. I was invited by some friends. I've actually never been to a convention, so this is going to be a really new experience for me. But what I'm hoping to do by the end of that convention is to fill an entire sketchbook with new sketches. And all of that stuff will be hopefully on my second channel, Sketch Every Day. So if you're not subscribed to my check second channel, go check that out. I'm eventually working on updating that channel trailer, which is really overdue. Uh, so yeah, that's really what I just extra stuff wanted to say this week. Also, a painting process video. I know I haven't had one of those in a while is going to exist for this painting sometime next week. So, as always, this has been. Thanks for watching, and I'll see you next time.